Welcome Pro Wrestling 225 family, I'm Spencer. I'm Landon. And we've got Pro Wrestling 225 former heavyweight champion, Corey Constantine. Good time. And we are here to talk to you and make all the picks for the biggest show to start the year. That's right, that 90s show. Pro Wrestling 225 presents a themed show to start off the year, January 8th, 2022. It's at the LM Lockhart Gym in Denham Springs, Louisiana. It's going to be a great card. We're here to break down some of it for you. But before we do that, Corey. Yeah. Um, last time we saw you, Fright yeah. Night. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine that went as planned. What gave it away? Yeah. It, it was rough. How are you feeling after the brutal assault? Well, you know, nothing a little bit of ibuprofen, maybe extra strength painkillers won't solve, right? I mean, I, I can only imagine your, your motivation to get some revenge on Purple Haze. It's, it's coming, man. Just... Just give it time, right? Just give it time. Well, okay. we're we're very much looking forward to to that clash. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, big ramp, obviously, playing a big part there. At, I mean, just look at the reaction. I know the vengeance is on on Purple Haze. You want the Pro Wrestling Two Two Five Heavyweight Title back, I know. But has Big Ramp made it personal? Um, I mean, when is he not? Right? I mean, that's that's essentially what he does he, he likes to get under people's skin um you know so I, I thought i was going the right direction getting under his skin peeling off that banana suit um yeah what an idiot but you know here we are empty-handed still but like i said due time right due time uh i know that the pro wrestling 225 family cannot wait to see you get your hands back on purple haze again yeah um, but I did want to ask you something else that happened at Fright Night was the first match of the night was supposed to be Wild Thing versus Michael White. And that, of course, as we know, did not happen. Instead, the opening contest ended up being the game changer, Christian Blake, versus a man you have a lot of history with in Lucha LaCora. What did you think about him coming back at Fright Night? Um, you know, I thought... He was dealing you know, with, uh, you know, broken back and all that good stuff. And um, apparently he, he is demonic because he's back despite that. So I, I absolutely thought that Lucho was done, that we would never see him again. And I have to be honest with you, the first thought that I had whenever he came out wasn't, you know, oh my gosh, you know, he's, he's here, he's here. It's, oh my gosh, what is Corey going to think? I mean, just after the, the incredible, incredible feud that you guys had all through 2021. So it's kind of funny, right? So he sends in, you know, his brother to try to finish the job. And obviously they're not quite the same because he couldn't pull the trigger. Um, so in my opinion, I don't necessarily think it's, it's done. Um, I know maybe people were led to believe that way. But personally, I have, you know business to tend to first with Purple Haze. Uh, once that's done, you know, maybe we'll we'll see what happens next. Definitely some unresolved tension there. Yeah, it sounds like a big 2022 ahead for Corey Constantine. Uh, let's get to this first show of the year, though. Let's get to that 90s show. You know, part of, of why you're here, Corey, is you know this business inside and out, and we would love to get your perspective on some of these matches that we're gonna be breaking down here for that 90s show. Yep, yep. So let's start with, with a big contest that, that is gonna be at that 90s show, Wild Thing. Wild Thing is gonna be going one-on-one -on -one with Thaddeus of the Crook Mob. And there's a lot going down here, right? We don't know if Wild Thing is 100%, right. but is that enough to face Thaddeus? And is it enough if Michael White isn't Thaddeus's corner? It, that's, it's such a, an interesting conundrum that Wild Thing finds himself in. You know, we've talked at length about the history that Wild Thing has had over the past year or so. And so he's got some incredible experience. He knows sort of what these guys are thinking. But could having Mike White on the outside be a little bit too much to overcome at that 90s show? You know that Wild Thing, we all saw the video, Wild Thing got attacked from behind. By the crook mob when when wild thing for all intents and purposes was planning on being just the general manager for that 90s show he was not going to be in ring right but now his hand is pushed a little bit and is forced so does wild thing kick off 2022 with a win or is it too much of a mountain to climb injury crook mob and all who picks up the win and and Corey, i know 
injury is something that you are not unfamiliar with. All right. <laughs> so I just want to get your perspective from from a from a professional standpoint when you are rebounding. How much does it change things getting into the ring when you're not 100 percent? So I think it's going to depend on who's playing chess and who's playing checkers. Yeah. Um, I think that Crook Mob, they're, they're going to play checkers because they seem simple-minded, maybe. Uh, Wild Thing's been in the game long enough to know, hey, they're probably going to be going after this injury. Let me pivot my game plan around that. So maybe he lures them in, maybe plays a little bit of possum. He's proved to be resilient over the years. I'm going Wild Thing. Wild Thing. Yeah, I, I think it might be a mistake to underestimate the mind of Michael White. He is an evil genius. We've seen it time and time again. And, That's and, generous. And I have to say, Thaddeus has been impressive. The little bit that we've seen of him in the ring, I think on this occasion, Crook Mob is a little too much for Wild Thing to handle. I'm going to go Thaddeus. I definitely see your point there, but it's hard for me to imagine, even if not 100%, it's hard for me to imagine Wild Thing not kicking off 2022 after the hell of a year that he had in 2021, not kicking it off with a win over Thaddeus. Michael White has been hiding from Wild Thing, and he may not be getting his hands on Michael White, but Thaddeus is going to pay for what Michael White has done, so I'm going to pick Wild Thing as well. Yeah, two to one. Two to one. Yeah, sorry about that, bud. We'll uh, see. We'll see. <laughs> another huge matchup. Uh, if you recall, Fright Night had one of the matches of the year in Pro Wrestling 225, that fatal four-way. Yeah. Uh, it was Braxton Hunter, Wes Warren, Dale Springs, and Hunter Law. An incredible match. Uh, incredible, incredible stuff. And in that match, Braxton Hunter picks up the win by pinning cold-blooded Wes Warren, an incredible finish, an incredible finish, and now that story continues because those two will go one-on-one -on -one at that 90s show. I can't tell you how excited I am about this match. Talk about two often overlooked guys, Wes Warren on a tear through Pro Wrestling 225 and gets what I believe is his first loss at uh, Fright Night, or at least the first one that Let's, I've seen in that uh, match. Uh, you know... <clears throat> Someone might have something to say about that. Sorry, sorry what? Oh, my <laughs> bad. My bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the first loss for sure for West Horn and Pro Wrestling 225 uh, did come at the hands of one Corey Constantine. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that quiz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's what I what I meant to say is West Horn has been extremely impressive, mm -hmm. and the fact that he didn't win that match, I think. Uh, presents sort of an issue for him in his mind. Because uh, you talk about the aggression that he brings to the table. Uh, and hitting, hitting that sort of wall, maybe getting his second loss, uh, is, is, is really going to make it for an interesting clash with, with this, at, uh, that 90s show. Yeah, Braxton Hunter is a guy, obviously, of 337, as we know, um, but was able to pick up this win in a really unique fashion. And uh, Wes Warren does not come off as a guy that takes losing lightly. So, Corey, let me go to you first. Wes Warren. Any, any chance at all for Braxton Hunter? Yeah, of course. But, I mean, I was in there with Wes Warren. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, relentless, the word comes to mind. Uh, yeah, Wes Warren. Cold-blooded is accurate. Wes Warren. Wes Warren. Wes Warren. Yeah, I think we're going to be unanimous here. Um, Braxton Hunter, I think, was able to catch Wes Warren by surprise. And when you have that one-on-one -on -one matchup, I don't see that happening. So, Wes Warren, I think all three of us, unanimous there. But let's take nothing away from the incredible mind of Braxton Hunter. That pinfall at the end of the Fatal 4-Way was excellent. I just don't think Wes finds himself in it a second time. There you go. Um, okay, we also have tag team action at that 90s show. And it's going to be, you know, you talk about these guys that are making an impact and sort of running rampant on Pro Wrestling 225. And one group that's doing that is Disobey. Disobey, JTM, Simon Phillips, Brandon Collins. They are going to be taking on Level X, which as you know is a Sultan of the Sky, Blanco Loco, and unforgettable Axton Ray. So three on two handicap tag team action at that 90s show. Um, this is going to be, I know for me, this might be a show stealer. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about incredible tag team action. You always get it at Pro Wrestling 225. And Disobey 
has been tearing through. I mean, they may not be on a hot win streak, but they have some of the most impressive guys in Pro Wrestling 225. Just based on on the, uh, the, the mindsets that they have, that's a dangerous group. Yeah, I would agree with that. Corey, what is your experience? I don't know how much you've run into Level X, but I know you definitely have some experience with those members of Disobey. So is Disobey a legitimate threat to the tag team division in Pro Wrestling 225? Yes. However, I'm thinking if this was, and obviously it's in the name, right? Disobey. They're not just going to follow the rules. So, clearly, you might give them the edge here. Um, now, I have been in the ring with Blanco Loco, and he is incredible and can literally hit you from any angle, any height, any rope, any anything. Sultan of the Sky is accurate. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. But if we're given the numbers to disobey and just their history of coloring outside the lines, some might give the edge to disobey. I absolutely see that point. For me, Landon, you said it. You said they might not be on the hottest win streak until they can prove that they not only can be disruptive, but also victorious that I'm going to have to pick against them. I'm going to go level X. You know, they want to take Disobey to the next level, and they might do that at that 90s show. I, I think it'll be an interesting match, uh, absolutely. The, the clash of styles, I would love. Uh, I, I can't wait for it. I've listened to Last Match Standing. I've been on Last Match Standing. You have? A um, few times. And, and you're sticking to your gimmick right now of not really picking anybody, aren't you? <sighs> you know, it's, it's tough. I just, I can't see, based on... Uh, the the focus that Disobey has right now, I can't see them losing another match. I have to pick Disobey. So I'm on the losing end this time, it seems. But I think you're absolutely right. He is sticking to his game. I appreciate you pointing that out. <laughs> uh, that 90s show, Ella Lockhart Gym, Denham Springs, Louisiana. Not only do we have the incredible action that we just talked about, but also we have three championship matches to kick off the year. The first of which we don't actually know really, right? Because we have an SEC championship match, Open Challenge. Rut the Threat has posted uh, on social media, he's laid out the challenge for anybody in the back that wants a shot at the SEC championship. I have no idea who's going to come out and take that challenge. It, any insight from backstage, Corey? Not a clue. Oh, even if I did, I wouldn't give it away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, this is exactly why we love Rhett the Threat. He is a fighting champion, and we knew he was going to be that as soon as he won the SEC championship. Yeah, and he did it in incredible fashion, right? Finally being able to beat Michael White and Thaddeus in that handicap match at 225 Mania, uh, and he wants to prove that that championship is not a fluke, as we know, and we know that about Rhett the Threat, one of the best wrestlers in pro wrestling 225, uh, and it says a lot about him that he's willing to throw out an open challenge, I think. Definitely. Yeah, my pick is Rhett. <laughs> Regard regardless of who comes out. I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. I can't wait. Uh, you never know when that music hits, right? And, and, and it's interesting, though, because you have to think that whoever is planning on accepting this open challenge, they can, they can scout. They can look at film. They can plan for Rhett the Threat. Rhett doesn't have that, um, that luxury. So I, I don't know. A mystery opponent is tough, but if anybody can handle that, I think it is our SEC champion. Absolutely. Rhett. Um, we get a... I'm also going to go red threat to the dope. <laughs> Karen Grove. I think I've had victory gimmick. Going to retain the ACC championship. <laughs> when did Rhett get here? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned earlier that Pro Wrestling 225 has some of the best tag team action around that you're going to find. And I could not agree more. And we're going to see more of it when our Pro Wrestling 225 tag team champions, the Pride... Defend against the Overboys. Uh, as you know, the Overboys were tag team champions. They won the tag team tournament. They were champs for over 240 days. But at Super Gold 5, they faced the Pride. Jordan Jock, Christian Blake versus the Pride, and they were able to get the win. They were able to get the win. Now, at the Mayor's Cup, Jordan Ja not there. Christian Blake was forced to defend the titles with Braxton Hunter as his partner, and they lost the tag titles to the Pride at the Mayor's Cup. So now, both these teams back at full strength. 
who has the edge to take home the tag titles at that 90s show? Look, I mean, yes, they they lost the titles, but the Overboys are one of the most fantastic tag teams that we have seen in Pro Wrestling 225. I mean, they have the crowd in the palm of their hand, and they're two individually uh, of the most Im impressive wrestlers I've ever seen. And so as a unit, they're great. Now, the, now you mentioned that Jordan Ja wasn't there. Now, if you had to replace him with somebody, hey, uh, give me Braxton Hunter every day. Talk about someone who knows tag team wrestling. But maybe the communication wasn't there. Totally different story whenever the Overboys are together. What do you think about that? What do you think about the Overboys? Because I, I, I compare the Overboys a little bit to Corey Constantine in the way that the Pro Wrestling 225 family loves you, right? And they love the Overboys. So how much of a factor can that play when you're facing two big threats like Charles West and Vladimir Koloff? I think Lenny hit on the head, quite frankly. Um, I mean, tag team wrestling is in and out about having that chemistry with your partner, knowing what they're thinking at the same time. They know where you're thinking. You know where they are. They know where you are. Uh, when you had to substitute Braxton in, yes, 337 had a great match with the Overboys in the past, but that doesn't mean they know the playbook and are, like, fully right. synced up. Having said that, you get those two back together against the Pride, I think it's pretty easy, man. It's easy money right here. They're going to take them home tonight. <laughs> I, I really think they could. Now, I, I do want to just mention that I am not quiet about being a huge Pride fan. I really am. I think they have something really special. But on this occasion, it might be too much. I'm going to have to go over, boys. I hate to be that guy. And I do. I love the over boys. I think they are incredible. But... But something that's going to stand out to me is, if you recall, um, at Fright Night, it was Vladimir Koloff that brought Lucha LaCora in to face Christian Blake. And he was none too happy when Christian Blake still picked up the victory at Fright Night. And I think that's going to provide some fuel, I think, for, for the pride. And Mrs. Koloff's baby boy and Charles West, I think, are going to get the job done. I think this might be one of the early match of the year. Candidates, for it could sure. be definitely could um, be match of the night. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so incredible tag team action, but I see the pride retaining at that night. Interesting. Show. Yeah, uh, Corey, I, I I know we have one match to go. We we wanted to get uh, a a different perspective for this next one. So I wanted before you go, before you go, we are going to be crowning our first ever Pro Wrestling Two Two Five Women's Champion at that ninety show. What does that mean for Pro Wrestling Two Two Five, and and how big of a deal is that to kick off the year with? I think it's important, man, right? I mean, you've had the women's revolution that's been happening. Um, it hasn't always been consistent. Like they've come a long way from where they were in the 90s. And I think this is a, a really big deal, especially for Pro Wrestling 225. Um, you know, you don't always have women's matches on the card, which is unfortunate, but I think this is gonna implement something new and bring some more attention and you'll be able, be able to highlight a lot of the skill sets of the women that are, you're gonna see at 225. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Any, any pick, you wanna make a pick? Well, who's in the match? It's Amber. It's Amber Rodriguez and Dream Girl Ellie. I know. I know. It's, it's, a, it's a toss it's up. It's such a, toss -up. a great what do you match. Think? I um. Hmm. Is it just Amber Rodriguez? Or is it uh, that's the question. That is that the is question. The that's the question, and you know all too well how Big Ramp can play a role in a match like this. Look. Here's the skinny, all right? I've actually been in the ring with Dream Girl Ellie, and she is tough as nails, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, if Big Ramp is present, we're swinging Amber. I mean, I know firsthand the influence that he has on matches. Yeah, if we're sure. not, Dream Girl Ellie is innovative and hard to beat, man. She she doesn't have quit in her. That I know, because I've tried to put her mm -hmm. away before, so... Knowing what I know, I'm going to give it to Amber mm. because I can't imagine that Big Ramp isn't going to want to be a part and have that tutelage or the you know bragging rights of having 
the first women's champion right. in his regime. So I'm going to go Amber. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know we want to get Alexis Windsor in on this moment, so we are going to do that. But before you go, Corey, just thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the time. Um, I know we're kicking off the year with that 90s show, uh, January 8th, the LM Lockhart Gym in Denham Springs, Louisiana. But I also know that it won't be long before we see you back in Pro Wrestling 225 and, and chasing after, whether it's Lucha Cora or Purple Haze in that Pro Wrestling 225 Heavyweight Championship. Man, I'm going to say... Big Willie Styles ready for Wild Wild West. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a character. It's <laughs> always fun to have Corey Constantine on. But now, we are joined by none other than Alexis Windsor. There she is. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Super grateful. Um, if, I mean, we got the lucky experience of being on Windsor's Court. And let I me know. tell you, that was the most fun. It really, it's just really like, was. I welcomed you, now you're welcoming me. It's, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we wanted to bring you in to get your perspective. We're making picks, right? And okay. that 90s show, it's going to be a big event. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a massive start to the year. And I don't know if it gets any bigger than crowning our first ever Pro Wrestling 225 Women's Champion. It's the mad esthetician Amber Rodriguez versus Dream Girl Ellie, winner of the Mayor's Cup. Yep. Right? So I just want to get your perspective before we make picks. What does it mean for you? And and we've talked about it before, how impressive you are as a referee, the way that Pro Wrestling 225 is progressing. What does it mean to now say that we're going to have a women's champion? And I think that's the key. Um, I think to promote women in wrestling more as a whole, but here in 225, you know, you're seeing me refereeing, we're getting more women's matches to now have our first women's champion. I think it's only a way that you know, the direction that this should go, um, 100%. I am like, I'm super excited to see, obviously, who wins the match and the match overall, but where this takes 225 in general. Um, yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree more. And I know Landon and I, as big of wrestling fans as we are, one of the things that we love the most is women's wrestling. Yeah. Uh, just because it it is all, it just delivers. You know, it just yeah. delivers. And so to bring that to Pro Wrestling 225 feels monumental. And what I love about um, these two competitors as well is how like athletic and skilled they are in the ring. And I think that's what everyone needs to see in women's wrestling. So mm. one of the reasons that I'm very excited about these two together for the Women's Championship. Yes. It's, in, it's incredible because you're, it, what, what this match brings to the table is you have Big Ramp on one side who has already claimed Amber Rodriguez as the Women's Champion. And then, on the other side, you have Dream Girl Ellie, the winner of the Mayor's Cup. Just one of the most phenomenal performers mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Yeah. This is going to be a clash. At and that I, I got to see, obviously, some of her, her matches at um, the Mayor's Cup. I was privileged, privileged enough to um, referee the, the final of that Mayor's Cup between her and Caitlin Black. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, obviously, um, you know, Dream Girl Ellie getting the win. Yes. And also yes. defeating Cassandra Golden, who herself, a great, fantastic competitor. Great competitor. Um, so I think that really shows the level, um, you know, of women's wrestling that we're going to see. You are absolutely right. And it should not be forgotten. And it cannot be overstated. These two competitors, Amber Rodriguez, Dream Girl Ellie, undefeated in pro wrestling 2-2-5 mm -hmm. action. Something's got to give. Somebody's going to walk home champion, and someone's going to be the first person to ever lose a women's championship match at That's pro right. wrestling 2-2-5. Yeah, yeah. So who's it going to be? Who walks away with the women's title? Does Amber Rodriguez stake her actual claim uh, with the help of Big Ramp, or does Dream Girl Ellie continue the hot streak, Mayor's Cup, on to women's title? I, I would love I would love to save Alexis for last. Is that okay? I, is absolutely. That okay? Save the best to last. That's, That's you what got they that say. Right. No offense. You know, <laughs> there is there is <laughs> one person who is in this match that has absolutely captivated me, and uh, I'm I'm probably her number one fan now. So you know I've got to say it. Ooh. Ooh. Dream girl Ellie all day. She's absolutely going to be the first pro wrestling two two five women's champion. I guarantee it. There is one person in this match that's going to make all the difference, and he is not on the card, and that is Big Ramp. Whether you like it or not, Big Ramp will play a role in this match. He does, just like Corey Constantine said, he does want to be able to brag about having the first ever women's champion in BRE, 
and I can't see a way where he doesn't let Pro Wrestling 225's That 90s Show end without Amber Rodriguez walking out as women's champion. I love that I get the, not the deciding vote, but the, the final vote. <laughs> You're the tiebreaker. I, I, the tiebreaker, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the word I was looking for. So, I know who my pick is. Um, Dream Girl Ellie, I will talk about first. This is not to take away from her because I think she is an incredible wrestler, formidable competitor. Um, again, obviously I refed, um, you know, the final of the Mers Cup. She showed me her biceps. You know, <laughs> this happened in the ring. <laughs> She showed me her biceps. She's an incredible athlete. But I agree with you that I really think the deciding factor is Big Ramp. You know, I've had a lot of, you know, encounters with Big Ramp, both from an interviewing perspective and as a referee. And if he's there, which I, there's no way he's not going to be there. Um, between that and, you know, Amber Rodriguez as well, you know, the mad esthetician. I don't know what she's got up her sleeve or in her, you know, tool bag, right. whatever you call it. Um, my money is therefore on Amber Rodriguez. So I would, I will just say, never underestimate experience. Yes. And Dream Girl has been all over. That's not to say that Amber hasn't, but I think Dream Girl might have something up her sleeve that will surprise you. I just think the other two, there's too much of an unknown and like a wild card sure. factor. Sure. And I don't know, maybe uh, Dream Girl Ellie's experience will help with that, you know, potentially. Um, but yeah, I still, Amber. It's, and that's what makes this match so interesting. Yeah. There is one thing we can agree on, and that is that this is going to be an incredible match. And it is an incredible moment that you need to experience yeah. in person. The crowning of the first ever Pro Wrestling 225 Women's Champion will happen January 8th. Denham Springs, Louisiana, the LM Lockhart Gym, that 90s show. I got chills right now. I know. I'm so ready. ready. No, same. I'm oh so, so ready. Like, for real. Hey, that's... <laughs> Showing biceps, I think. Is yeah, how about that? Happening. Oh, yeah. some bicep action? Oh, yeah, that's something. Yeah, I mean, this is, there's a reason I wear a jacket. It's fine. Um, Alexis, I cannot be taken advantage of as a referee. You, know, no, you've got you to, have to be ready. I'm okay. always ready. <laughs> Thank always you so ready. much for joining us. Thank you for having me. We super me. appreciate it. Landon, are you excited? Are you pumped? So this show was literally built for me. I'm a 90s kid. He's a 90s kid. Let's that 90s show, I, I, know, I, know, I know, I know. I've got, I've got my outfit ready. Same. I have multiple outfits for <laughs> You definitely want to make sure that you're following Pro Wrestling 225 on all socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well, for all the updates as we lead in to that 90s show. And oh, and sorry to then no, cut you off. To absolutely. Plug. Don't also forget, forget ugh, anyway, follow Goodspeed. <laughs> Good Speed Entertainment on Facebook, on YouTube, where you can catch all of Windsor's Court, myself, and interviews leading up to each show. There's going to be some great content, possibly with these two guys. You never know. You never know. You never know. And if you're not following Alexis Windsor, you're missing out. You know, you talk about the outfits that could be seen at that 90s show. If you want a sneak peek, you yeah. might. The may yes, there may be. Let's give a little bit of a teaser here. There may uh. be. Yeah something 90s themed leading up to the show that could possibly have um, audience participation. Oh. Um, for Follow Alexis Windsor right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instagram dress for Lex. <laughs> there it is. We will see you at That 90s Show, January 8th at the LM Lockhart Gym in Denham Springs. Let's crown ourselves the first ever women's champion.